Okay, gang, I have my, uh, everything set up here, good to go. Hooked into the Variac, I've got it set down to about five volts, and we're gonna start going. So we'll turn that on. I'm gonna set this to AC volts first. Let's see if I can see if we're getting AC volts here. Which side is the, right here, okay. So if I were to turn this up, yeah, see it says I've got like 10 volts AC coming in, okay? So we're gonna switch that to DC volts. Uh, the power is off, so it should have nothing, but I'm gonna turn, and I have no tubes in either right now. I'm just running, I'm gonna have it on, uh, but let's see what we get for DC volts. Oh, that's AC volts, sorry. Let's switch it back to AC volts for a second and see what we get on the other side of the winding here. We're getting two volts. That means, I think, that, we're, what, that doesn't make sense because it should be 120. I don't know, that's still, let me think. Well, let's put the DC volts and let's check at the other side of the diode bridge here. So I've got 35 volts DC coming through. Um, if I go to my power supply nodes, for example, 35 there. Well, this is in the way. 35 there. Let me get this out of the way. So I'm just trying to see that it, look, it looks like to me we're getting voltages we should be expecting in all these places. 33 volts at the end of the thing. Now, there's no tubes so that won't be dropping voltage, but I just wanted to make sure everything looked semi-decent and nothing's smoking. I'm going to bring it up to about 15 volts AC, just a little higher. And we will look at voltages again. 65 volts, yeah. So the, it's, it's coming in looking good. Nothing seems to be drawing excessive current. I don't hear any kind of whining on the transformer or it popping its 3-amp fuse. Uh, so, um, it's all a good sign. Now, here's an interesting thing for you. If you can see where I'm touching here, this is the top end. Like I said, I've got about 64 volts DC. And if I go into the middle of these two resistors, which is where the middle point of these two series capacitors are, it's at 32 volts, about halfway. These are called balancing resistors because they basically allow an equal amount of current to flow through to here as is coming into the capacitor here. Uh, so another important thing of note that I just did, when you're dealing with capacitors where one of them, there's two in stack like this, this one will have ground reference right here because the outside is the ground. But just like I touched here and I got 32 volts, when I touched here I get 32 volts because this is the top end and it will be the same with all of these they will have the voltage on them. So you should be very careful when dealing with capacitors that are in series because these tops are carrying the high voltages. So once I have this amp up, it's gonna be running at three to 400 volts. If I was to touch my finger right here and ground it to somewhere else, that would be a very unhappy moment. So you always wanna be very, very wary of that kind of stuff. So that's a good first startup. It looks like we're okay. I'm gonna just slowly, I don't want to get it up to the 500-ish volts that, you know, or 400-ish volts that this supports. So I'm going to slowly be winding up the voltage a little bit. This supposedly uh, does something that people call forms the caps. I don't know if that's true. I think they should form them before they leave the facility. I'm up to 130 volts. That should be about half that, 65. So that would be about half of your high voltage sitting on the top of these, and you do not want to touch those. So um, still slowly everything looking good. Let's kind of see what kind of... Oh, I won't have any volts here because the, there's no conduction of the tubes there. So... I don't want to exceed what the capacitors can handle, but these are, you know, I think they're like 200 volt capacitors, uh, or I'm sorry, four, like 300 volt capacitors, but they're in series, so they can really take double at 700, but I still don't want to push them too hard. But everything's looking good. I don't see anything smoking. I don't hear any bad noises. 160 volts. 160 volts. 157 volts, that's just because of the droppers. The droppers aren't dropping a lot because a lot of current isn't going through right now. Ooh, that's a good uh, electroshock. And I don't know what I arced that to, but I obviously touched something. It didn't get me, but it scared the living crap out of me. Um, let's see right here, 160 volts. 160, all right. I'm gonna keep slowly bringing it up a little bit. We're now up to about 60 volts or halfway. Okay, so what I think I might do is I'm gonna grab the other half of this since I don't, probing around like that is dangerous. You can accidentally clip things you don't want to like I just did. 
So I will put my other lead and just leave it on the high voltage for now and I can come back later and, and as you saw I did connect these and you can see my voltage. I'm going to slowly keep bringing this up till I get to about 120 and make sure it doesn't exceed the filter. So these are 400 volt ones down through here and this one, I'm trying to remember what it was. I don't see it on this side. Let me look on the opposite side. It says 350 volts, so in theory it can take up to 700, so I'm not going to have to worry too much, but I'm still just going to slowly bring it up. I do have a dummy load connected. I don't need one because there's no power tube, so the output transformer is getting nothing because it can't conduct. Um, I'm up to about 70, degree, uh, 70 volts right now. see that slowly winding up and everything's looking good. First startup looks like a success. I don't hear anything smoking. I'm just going to keep slowly winding my voltage up. So again, like I said, we've got 380 here, but the because of the pair and the way those are balanced, it can take double that voltage. That's why a doubling of these capacitors is nice because they give you effectively double the voltage rating of what one of them would be, theoretically. In practice, it's probably less than that by some margin because of imperfections, but 400. I'm up to about 110 volts. Everything's looking good. Okay, that's a good sign. So at this point then, what I do want to do is shut her off. We can plug, her, and plug our tubes in, plug her into the wall with the dummy load and see if anything else looks weird. Um, oh, technically I could plug it into a speaker. I don't have a speaker near here. So I'm going to try and figure that part out. We'll, we'll, next step is really going to be to plug in tubes and power it on and see what we get. So back in a jiffy. All right, so I have my speaker hooked up. I've got my tubes in. We're going to power on. We're going to watch our high voltage come up and see what we see. The good thing is, is that's a sign that my foot switch is working. I'm not hearing the relays click, but they may be super silent. We got 450 volts. That seems okay. Nothing's popping or smoking or I hear noise. So what I can do now is plug a cable into the input and then just touch the other ends of it and you'll hear buzzing and humming in theory. Yep, we get that. Well, we have sound. So that means it's working. So I'm going to go get my uh, guitar, bring it down. We'll see what it sounds like, but it looks like we have a working amp. Um, different bright settings. Oh, the foot switches won't work here, but that is the preamp boost. You get a slight pop. That's the preamp boost. This should be the draw, the channel select, but that wasn't, isn't going to work, but. So we will play around with this in a second. Let me just go ahead and shut back off to be safe. And we will go get ourselves a guitar and see what we get. Okay, I've got my guitar. And let's see what we get. I guess it's not the end of the world, so the preamp boost. <laughs> 
So the bright switch, this is mid, uh, bright, I think down. And then I can go middle, which disables it. I might need to adjust that. Um, that's something I'll possibly go through as a separate video, but for this point, you see it working. I need to adjust. It could be just that my trim is just maxed out and this drive can be a bit, you know, harsh if you have it maxed out. So I'm gonna play the guitar a little bit and just not worry too much about that. But I think at this point, this is a sign it's working. Um, I'm getting a lot of hum because my lights are nearby and my guitar is nearby and all that jazz. But at any rate, it is, if I turn the master down, I'll bet you. I think it's just I need to dial the gain down because at a fairly at a lower drive level right now and a lower volume that's still pretty gainy. So I need to play around with this tone stack as well. There's a tone stack on the board. I could basically set my tone the way I like it with the drive off and then adjust and tweak a little bit to where I like my tone, then engage the drive, and then I can adjust these trim pots just like a treble middle bass to where I like it. And that way, even if I'm adjusting my tone here, this will just shape the tone a little bit only in the drive channel. And it's usually something you just set it and forget it once you've got the drive where you like it. But it works, it's doing what it's supposed to. Um, I will try and do a little bit of fine tuning. I'll do a video on the fine tuning of it, and then we'll give you a full demo. So there you go, guys. It works. Cheers. All right, so today I've got Matt here. He's going to jam with me. He's the, he's the actual guitar slinger instead of me, who's the mediocre guitar player. So uh, we've got it set up right now. I do have the effects loop in, but it's off for now. We'll put a little reverb in at some point. But first, he's going to try out with his. I'll let him kind of talk about the guitars himself because he'll be playing it. Uh, but I might come in here. I'll, I'll, the only thing I'm going to really be doing here is the uh, jazz rock switch to give people a sense of what that sounds like. But for that, we'll go ahead and give this guitar a demo. Okay, cool. So this is my very first guitar that I got in 1984. Just so that, that dates me. So anyway, it's it's a Vega guitar. 
Just going to give history on this. It uh, was when Martin decided they wanted to get into an electric market back in the 80s, <clears throat> and then they bought Vega. And to do it, I don't know why they didn't really just release Martin electric guitars, because it seems like that would have done really well. Um, and so here near Seattle on Bashaw Island, there's a pickup maker called Lawler, L-O-L-L-A-R. And uh, I wanted this guitar um, to basically sound like a Les Paul. And the, the pickups were recommended to me. I wish I remembered which model. Where you got that from? Or... Um, but uh, they sound fantastic, I think. And I guess just here we go. All right. So I'll start with some clean. If you see me looking over there, it's because I'm making sure that what I'm playing is in the monitor. So. switch between I have the I, 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 you have the preamp boost up as well turn it on I'll turn it off okay, okay. Um, okay. so right now the preamp boost I've noticed is very subtle on this amp on the other amp I had it was a little bit more prominent but in this one it's just very subtle but it does take the tone stack out so but this is the bright we had this is the low bright there's bright and brighter pretty much and then there's a middle switch which is no bright at all it just cuts the bright caps out so we're gonna let him start playing again for a minute on clean I'm leaving it where it was but then I'll switch it up to the high bright and then I'll cut it back to the middle brightness as well so Okay, so what I'm going to do is start with the neck position, um, neck pickup, and then blend it, and then the bridge. So you, you just kind of get an idea. And I'm going to go volume and tone, everything's mixed, so...
too bright, it's not on the brightest. It, it probably just depends on which you know pickups you're using. So, okay, cool. I think that's enough of this one, so we're gonna stop for a second and we'll switch up and go to the next guitar. Back in a second. All right, we're back with the Strat. So with the Strat, actually play for a second on, on the camera and we're gonna listen to the different bright settings and find the one you like the best really quickly. So go ahead and play and just see what happens. Okay. So the reverb didn't work, so we're turning that off. I put a brand new battery and it doesn't work. So anyway, go ahead and just do a little jamming uh, on the clean channel. Show okay. off your pickups and whatnot as well. Okay, so just a little bit. This is a, you know, an HSS humbucker, a single single. Man, there's some dust in there I gotta get out. Um, these are uh, Tom Anderson pickups. They're not uh, Fender pickups. I'm probably gonna swap them out for Fender pickups um, because I like those better. These were a nice experiment, but you know. Anyway, so that's what I have in here. Um, they're enjoyable. Sound nice, they sound really great with this amp, but anyway, here we go.
show us his telecaster next. We'll go through some of the same rigmarole. Back after the cut. All right. Okay, so here we have it now. Last one on the telly. Go wild. And we'll, and we'll do again, probably similarly, I'm gonna, we'll play with the bright a little bit. The bright's off. Uh, we'll do um, bright of the two levels so you can hear that. And then right. and then we'll go to letting you just jam. We'll do, and, and the same with the jazz switch. I think that's kind of good for people to get a sense of that. So go ahead and play. Okay. And this is a custom one that I actually put together. Uh, it's a Warmoth kit. And then I got these, these custom shop uh, pickups from a guy who used to work at Fender, believe it or not. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So we'll start with the uh, bridge and then blended and then, or sorry, neck, blended and then bridge. If you found this stuff interesting, uh, please give it a thumbs up as well, and uh, we'll try and keep more stuff coming for you. Thanks again, Matt, for helping out today. And uh, on that note, I will just kind of pan the camera down, and Matt's going to play us out while I show the a little bit of the last bit of the amp. <laughs>